Good morning. Thank you for tuning into this yoga class. Today we're going to focus on the upper spine and our peak pose today is going to be fish pose, which is mostly an upper back back bend. And so with this new kind of area of focus, I thought we could stop, but start by doing a little self massage or myofascial release. So if you have a ball or the yoga tune up balls, that's what I would normally recommend, but I can't find one right now. So uh, I'm going to use one of my pups chuck it balls here. Um, a dryer ball would work great too if you don't have a dog ball or a tennis ball. Um, I like something with a little bit of squeeze, right? Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the lacrosse balls because they don't have any give, right? So solid ball is fine, hollow ball is fine as long as it has a little bit of squeeze to it. And then in working the upper back to get really good upper back, then we also have to be really open across the chest. So we'll also, after our rolling, we'll start out and do some stuff to open up the chest. So if you have a nice long strap, that can be helpful for some of the arm and chest work that we do. And we're gonna go back and we'll get started on our back with our tune-up ball or dog ball or dryer ball, whatever you have behind us. <clears throat> so as you kind of glance at the area behind you, make sure it's free of props. And then you'll go ahead and set your ball down. And the goal is that once I lay down, this ball is going to be behind my right shoulder. And that will have a little bit of an off-putting sense because my left shoulder will be dropped and my right shoulder will be lifted a little bit from the prop. And then as you lay down on the ball, you could try to reach behind to move the ball if you need a different position, or you could just move your body on top of the ball. Okay? And we'll do a few different spots. So what we'll do is we'll do a little bit of arm and leg work just to reposition our spine and our shoulder blade near the ball. So we can start with our arms out nice and wide and our palms facing up. We'll step into the feet so that the hips lift, which will intensify it momentarily. And then put the hips down a little bit over to the left. And then from there, let both knees fall to the right. Every time we change our position slightly, the ball's gonna roll into or change the degree in which it's pressing into your back kind of the goal. Right? Now the left hand will reach up to the sky and I want you to reach it, right, which is protracting away. And then the left hand is going to reach over for the right hand. Mine have never touched, so no worries if yours doesn't make it there. And now I want you to reach away with your right hand as well, right, so you're kind of protracting and spreading the right shoulder blade. And then we'll stay here for for a moment and just take some nice breath, breathing into the ball where you can feel that air of your body expand. And as it does, it meets the resistance of the ball with its own little resistance. And then the left hand is gonna reach up. The knees will come back up and the left arm will go back up to the left. And now we're gonna move our hips to the other side. I'll lift my hips and bring them over to the right. I'm going to let my knees fall to the left. Stay here for a moment. This is a juicy one for me. Anytime you need to stop or move ahead quickly, if something feels good or bad, make sure you guys do that. And then the right arm will reach up towards the ceiling. Give it a little reach so that it's protracting. And then can you pull the shoulder blade back down into the ball so it's retracting? And pro. And re, and pro, and re. Now the right hand can reach over towards the left. They won't meet. And then the right hand can open up for a little spinal twist. We'll keep our knees over to the left for a moment. And then knees back to center. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the ball out and somehow get the ball underneath the left shoulder. You could sit up and lay down on the ball similar to what we did before. 
Now, I highly recommend, maybe even after class, doing a little bit more of this. We're going to get on to our yoga soon, but you can work any way that feels good and know that it's doing good. And if you stop, if it's feeling bad, you can really just let your intuition guide you. Okay, let's see. We're moving our hips over to the right, and then our knees will fall left. Grow long in the left hand, left arm, like you're reaching your left fingertips away from you. And then we'll reach the right arm up towards the ceiling. And then the right hand can reach over toward the left. Breathing into the ball. Now the knees will come back to center and the right arm can reach back up. And the right arm can come up in that T-shape. Now we'll move the hips over to the left and we'll let the knees fall right. The left arm can reach up and then we'll do that protraction, retraction. We we'll reach our fingers a little bit more towards the ceiling, and then we let our shoulder blade pull back towards the ball. Now we'll let the left arm reach for the right and have the feeling of both shoulder blades spread here. And then the left arm will reach back open for the twist and we'll stay here for three easy breaths. And then we can set the ball aside. We can rock and roll or roll on over to a seat. And I don't think we'll need the ball anytime soon. You can go over and set that aside. But find your strap and we'll come into hero's pose. I'm sitting on a block in between my heels just to hold the weight of my body a little bit. And we've got the strap nice and handy. And then we'll go ahead and hold the strap into a nice wide V, much, much past your shoulder width distance. And you might have to go further. And what we'll do is we'll play with our range of motion, taking our arms more up overhead. See how that feels. And then you might even be able to go back further than that if you widen your hands slightly. And they might come behind you. Keep a little tension on that strap or rope, whatever you're using, and then come back over. If this isn't working, try a wider, wider grip. Keep widening until it feels okay. And if you get as wide as your strap and you still can't do it, no worries about it. Just take the mobility as far as it will go, even if it's kind of on this diagonal in front of you where you can glance up and see the straps. All right, we'll set the strap aside. <clears throat> Make the number four with your hands and then let your fingers wrap around your thumb and take some circles with the wrists. And switch directions. And then flip the water off. And now we'll take the left arm out with the thumb facing down. As I bend the elbow, the back of the hand will come behind me. I'll keep my chin back, my head back over my spine as I let my right ear drop to my right shoulder. And then release the first side and we'll do that over on the right. The right hand comes out with the thumb down, bending at the elbow, the back of the hand to the lower back, keeping my chin back. My left ear falls to my left shoulder.
points. Take a couple shoulder rolls up, back, and down. Maybe three, and then switch directions. And we're ready to move. All right, if ever you have trouble with some salutations too, maybe down dog feels a little too tight. It's always good to do a little shoulder chest mobility ahead of time. I'll keep this block kind of handy, but we'll come to our tabletop and take some cat cows. Let's see if we can really focus on the mobility of the upper spine here. So as you come into your cow and you drop down, can you feel your chest dropping through your arms? Look forward, take a deep breath. As you exhale, protract and round, tuck the tension toward the head. And just take a few more cycles of doing that. And back to neutral. All right, let's try our down dog. Let's see how it feels after we've found some of that mobility. Right, wider with the hands will accommodate tighter shoulders. And you could bring the hands maybe even as narrow as inner shoulder width, if that feels good for you. We're opening up the whole back line of the body in dog pose. So you might take a little bit of movement, bending one knee and then the other. Now, as you inhale, wave forward to a plank pose. If you are having trouble keeping your hips up or strength in this pose, you could try bringing your feet together so that you can squeeze your inner leg line and really recruit the lower body strength. On your next exhale, pike back to dog. All right, and you can keep your feet together if you're doing that in plank. Inhale, wave forward. Exhale, wave back. One more time, we'll wave forward on the in-breath. And then keeping the chin off the chest, keeping the gaze just in front of the mat, lower down to your belly. Tops of toes will untuck, but the legs stay nice and strong. And just embrace this wave of strength that takes it from the legs up the spine as the hands press down and pull back for a baby cobra. Exhale, lower, and do that twice, twice more. As you come to rest the head down, can you find your strap? And we'll interlace behind, right? And my hands can be as far away from each other as feels good, or as close as feels good. Try to keep a little soft in the elbows. Find that strength in the lower body, tops of toes pressing down. Feel the belly slightly pull in, and now the shoulder blades retract towards each other. As we peel our chest off the mat, as we maybe take our arms off our, our back. Breathe into the heart. And lower down and rest. Bring one cheek to the mat. And you could windshield wipe your legs. I'm just reading my little uh, card here about fish pose. And this locust pose that we're doing is almost like an inverted fish. And it says, Opens the chest, alleviates respiratory problems, huh? That sounds nice. And the mantra says, I inhale life's positive energy. Let's do that. And exhale negativity. All right, let the hands sweep back and press yourself up to table. And then back into dog pose. We'll come into three-legged dog. Extending the right leg back and up. Remember that outer hip hug in to really stabilize the spine and the pelvis here. As you come into an exhale, we'll wave forward again, but this time we bring the right leg with us in our chest. 
And then we step the right foot forward, left knee down. <clears throat> Let's reach up, one breath, one movement. And then as you exhale, we'll make our way into a forward fold. So the back foot will hop up to marry the right and we bow the head. Another deep opener for the back body here. Can you start to strengthen up the legs without locking the knees? Can you turn on your core and deepen your fold while staying easy in the back of the neck? Come into a halfway lift, press the palms to shins, lengthen the chest forward, and then bow one more time. Soften and rise north as we reach up and come into mountain. And then hands by your side. Exhale. Feel your feet rooting down. Spread your toes. Rock side to side and front to back until you feel very grounded. Feel the strength of your legs. Travel up the body just like our back bend. And maybe not back bending here, but nice and wide across the heart. As you inhale, reach up and look up with your chest. As you exhale, forward fold, and we'll come into that lunge again, left leg back. Inhale, reach the arms high. And make your way to dog pose. Hands come down and the right foot goes back. We'll take five breaths here. You can always come to table if you need. Left leg back and up. Come through that hanging plank. Left foot steps forward, right leg down. Top of right foot presses, one breath, one movement. Inhale, reach up. Move to our forward fold. Soften to rise. Mountain pose. Okay. So as we get further into our moon and our sun salutations here, let's see if we can practice a little upper back bending. <clears throat> when we do a reach up, look up, we'll wanna keep the hips back, right? When we tend to look up, the hips will trail forward. So in your mountain pose, soften your legs, keep the legs, or soften your knees, but keep the legs really strong, feel your glutes strong. And no, say, you know, I'm keeping my hips back as I move my, my upper spine. Reach up, look up, right? Almost like you're going up and over one of those pole vaults. And then exhale, forward fold, right leg back, knee down. You can try that in your low lunge here when we reach up as well. Strong in the hips, up and over as we look up and reach the chest towards the sky and make our way back to dog. Three more breaths here. All right, make your way to the top of your mat. We'll get ready for a halfway lift here. Breathe in, chest rises, crown reaches. Exhale, fold. Rise to stand. Again, hips stable, chest towards the sky and find your mountain pose. Okay, we're gonna do a little crescent moon work, standing crescent moon, just kind of like a standing banana asana before we do our sun salutation. Work a little bit more to kind of free the connected tissue and the side, back, and front, right? Kind of all that area that surrounds our upper back. <clears throat> we'll take our hands up overhead and our fingers will interlace, right? All except our pointer finger. And then we'll, again, practicing our range, see if you can get your arms to frame your ears. And then if it feels a little scrunched, that's okay. We're supposed to be lifting the shoulders up. And can you feel how that lift stretches the connective tissue in your side and your back and your front body just a little bit? And press the palms together. Right, that will alleviate some of that strain. And then we'll do a gentle tick tock back and forth, side to side. Definitely not 
an extreme range. Play with a gentle range here. Now come back to stillness and we'll go over to the left. As I'm going to the left, my hip can reach to the right a little bit, but make sure that right shoulder sneaks back, right? We don't want to cave our chest towards the left. Keep the arms active. This is really hard work. And back to center. And let's go right to the other side. Tick tock, right? Hips go over to the left. Keep that right shoulder back. Legs super strong. Feel the glutes really carrying a lot of the weight, the core protecting the spine here. Right, we can't be flexible without strength. Come back to center one more, a little up and back here, right? Look up towards your thumbs, keep the legs and the glutes and the core strong as you go up and over that pole vault with your heart. Follow your fingers back as far as you can. And then release, and we'll come into a forward fold. Easy does it, soften the knees, lift low of the head. You could take hands to brick or hands to mat. Walk the hands over to the right. Take a little halfway lift and bow. Walk the hands over to the left. Do the same thing. All right, back to center. Before I come up, I'll just make sure that I have my strap in the at least one block handy. We'll rise to our mountain and we'll prepare to flow in our sun salutation. Let's focus on maybe two mechanical things in our flow. One is in our back bend, right? Keeping those hips back, reaching up with the heart when we do our Urdhva Hastasana, our reach up. And then as we come into our dog pose, can you focus on keeping your knees soft and sending your hips up and back, which will kind of lengthen out the whole spine. <clears throat> Starting in mountain pose, that solid lower body, as we inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold in half. Long spine for your halfway lift. We move to plank. Your torso is already in a great position. Just keep that head from tucking and falling forward as you step back. Strength and length. Exhale, lower. Inhale, cobra. Strong back. Shoulders down and together. Exhale, lower. Make your way to dog. Five breaths here, lengthen your spine by softening your knees and pointing your hips up and back. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, make your way. Halfway lift on your inhale. Exhale, fold. Rise to stand, hips back, hard up. Mountain pose. One more time. Reach and fold. Halfway lift and plank. Lengthen, even the head is the, the top of the line. Exhale, lower. Inhale, back bend. Make our way to dog. Long spine and dog. Remember the core and the ribs pull in to support the spine here. Make your way to the top of your mat. Find that halfway lift, forward fold. Rise to mountain, lift the heart, and exhale, hands beside us. 
five breaths in mouth. Okay, let's do some more strap work. <clears throat> Just like our standing locust, that's what we'll do, right? Or just like our prone locust. Now we've got our hands behind us, interlacing with a good amount of distance between your hands to accommodate for a nice wide chest, right? Sometimes we get fixated that hands together is some sort of goal or perfection. But when I do that, I can kind of bypass this really nice chest and the heart. So elbows say soft as the hands pull away from the sacrum, soft knees, breathing into the heart. Can you feel your ribs and your core pulling towards your spine on your exhale? Take the feet nice and wide, outer hip distance, angled out slightly, lift the heart, look up, Soften the knees and fold. The hands could come off your sacrum, but they don't have to. And go ahead, release the strap, keep it towards the side. Toe heel your feet together, or not together, it could be hip width, just a little closer. And then we'll lunge back with the left foot and put the knee down. Inhale, reach the arms high. Exhale, hands to heart. Press the palms together, take a nice breath in. And then twist to the right. Can you gaze towards your fingertips or maybe over your right shoulder or elbow? All right, untwist, hands come down, find those blocks, maybe one under each hand, they might just touch down to the mat, and we're gonna fly coming into our standing leg split. Blocks can be helpful in that highest height as I lift the back, back leg, shift my weight forward over my right foot, and take flight. So even though we have the blocks, try to keep some of your weight out of them, and really try to straighten and engage that back leg nice and lifted. Outer hips hugging in. Can you come to your fingertips on the blocks? And then release and soften. Come into a forward fold. Or if you're just back to mountain, that's okay too. That's where we'll be meeting. Rise up. All right, we'll do that lunge back into our standing leg split on the other side. And we'll start with that same pose that's gonna help to open our chest for our fish pose shortly here, okay? So take the feet nice and wide. Find the strap, keeping the ribs and the hips back and the ribs and the core pulling in. We lift the heart. On an inhale, lift the chest, gaze up, and then soften the knees and bow. Let the hands come off your sacrum and fall forward if that feels good. And then we'll strap, strap can go aside and the feet come closer together. This time we'll lunge the right leg back, knee down. Inhale, reach the arms high. Exhale, hands to heart. Press wide across the back and the chest as we twist left. Let the gaze slowly work into the pose. Keep the lower body strong and rooted. Release the twist and we'll get ready for that standing leg split, maybe on blocks. Back foot flies, left leg is that, is that pillar. Right, standing nice and tall out of that left leg. 
keeping that right leg as straight as you can, flexing the foot, reaching back with the heel, playing with taking some weight out of the block. And release into your mountain or your fold, whatever feels good. And come on up to standing. Okay. <clears throat> on your strap, one more time. We're going to do some balance. Go to the back of your mat. Take the strap behind you. And for a moment, just assess how far apart your body wants your hands to be. And if you've opened up enough, or maybe your hands are touching, you could ditch the mat, uh, the, the strap, and just interlace your hands. Okay. So we've got that lift of the heart, but we're maintaining hips forward and a strong core. I'm going to step forward on my right foot. I'm going to feel the ball of my foot rooting down. I'm going to feel my left toes gently land to the ground. And then my left heel lifts. Before I lift my foot up, I'm going to focus that gaze to one spot and maybe just start counting the breath. As the left foot comes up, the torso comes down as a little pendulum. Keep that outer hip strength. Keep that gaze to one spot. The hands could lift from your sacrum or rest there, whatever feels better for you. And then release, shake it out for a moment. Okay. So our chest and our forward posture of rounding and caving has a lot to do with the connective tissue in our arms being tight. And I'm feeling that now as I'm feeling the opening in my forearms, right? In my triceps. All right, to the back of the mat. We'll try that to the other side, right? If you interlaced your hands and that was a doozy, you can choose to go back to the strap. The left foot will step forward, right heel, and then pinky edge, ball of the foot, and then toe edge, ball of the foot. We focus that gaze. We start counting. So, right, our habitual thoughts and Monday morning quarterbacking is put to rest. And release when you're ready. Go ahead and shake it out. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna take a little bit of some seated postures. So it can be helpful to sit on a little blanket or pad so that the hips are lifted. And we'll do our butterfly pose. Bottoms of feet together and the knees fall out. And I'll really press the feet together Use the muscles in my seat to help with that external rotation or fastening of the legs. And then to practice that flexion of the hip before flexion of the spine, I'll reach my belly button towards my feet, keeping my shoulders back and my chin up. And if you'd like to round the spine, that might feel nice after all the back bending, you can go ahead and do that. Up we go. We'll extend the right leg out on a slight diagonal. I'll turn the torso, flex at the hips, round the spine. The left hand could reach over, bow the head. Keep the legs strong here, keep the core working. And if you need to put a prop underneath the right knee or bend the right knee, you can. Press the earth away to come up and we'll switch sides. Left leg out, slight diagonal, right leg comes in and that half butterfly. Angle my torso to the extended leg, flex at the hips, and then flex at the spine. Right hand could reach over, bow the head. Um, 
Lana. Extend both legs out. We'll set up our seated twist. Sometimes the seat needs to be a little bit higher for this one. We'll bend the right leg and then the foot's going to come to the mat on the opposite side of the left leg. And then the left leg's going to bend back so the foot comes towards the hip. You want to be sitting up nice and tall without rounding back. You don't want to twist from a rounding position. So lift up that seat higher if you need to. The right hand will tend behind me and <clears throat> the left hand can reach over for that top right leg or wrap up and over. Keep the energetic feeling of the sitting bones rooting down, especially that right one, as you gaze over the right shoulder. And then twist the torso. Extend the legs out and we'll do that to the other side. Left leg bends. The foot will come to the opposite side of the right leg, which can bend back, foot towards hip. Feel that tall posture as the left hand tends behind you. The right hand just might reach and hold for the left leg or the arm could come up and over. Sitting nice and tall now on that left sitting bone, we gaze over the left shoulder. Extend the legs out. You can set your props aside. And we'll lower down to a nice slow count. Make sure that after you lay down that you'll have a block in your strap handy. Arms reach forward. Legs can point or flex. It doesn't matter, but keep them strong. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one. Long line. Reach overhead or reach up to the ceiling. And then go ahead, bend the knees and plant them firmly to the mat. Arms will reach down and they can grip the edges of your mat. Walk the shoulder blades a little bit closer towards each other. Right, and that will back bend the body. So can you lengthen up the spine slightly before you step into the feet and lift the hips? Now the arms will stay rooted so that not so much weight comes into the head and you can keep your arms gripping the mat. You can use your strap or you could practice interlacing. Release the bind, come down and find knee knot pose where the feet are wide and the knees fall towards each other. I like to rest my arms in a bowl pose shape, but do what feels good. Okay, we're gonna take this into our fish pose now. So the legs are gonna extend long. I'm going to take my arms, my hands, alongside me, palms facing down, so that my thumbs are closer to the sides of my legs. Okay. I'm going to walk my palms underneath my seat, and I can walk my elbows as close as they'll come towards each other without strain, right? So it might not be tucked in at all, right? Your elbows might not be tucked in, your forearms might not be tucked in like me. My thumbs are kind of touching underneath me, right? And so that as you bend your elbows and you root down with your forearms, your chest will lift and to some degree, the chin will lift and you'll move to more of the top of your head opposed to the back of your head. But it's important that the elbows are the weight bearing activity, not your head here. So keep them nice and strong. And that mantra. I breathe in positive energy. 
I exhale negativity. I breathe in positive energy. I exhale negativity. And then slowly start to tuck the chin if you haven't already, letting the back of the head come to the mat as the forearms of the elbows unbend. And then the arms can unthread from underneath you. It might be nice to let the palms slip up for a moment. And then I'll take my arms out to a T shape, rebend the legs, bring the hips over to the right to set up for a, super, or a, a spinal twist. My knees will come in towards the chest and they'll fall over to the left. Maybe the left hand comes to rest on the outer right leg as you gaze over to the right. And then back to center we go. And we'll do that to the other side with knees bent. I'll move my hips to the left. My knees come into the chest and fall right or whatever side you didn't do. Maybe the gaze follows out over the left shoulder. Okay, come back to center and we'll find Shavasana or some sort of resting pose where we can rest the body, rest the mind for a few breaths here. Bring a little bit of movement to your wrists and to your ankles, drawing circles. Bend the knees and hug them in towards the chest. And as you rock side to side, draw circles on the ceiling with your knees. And you can rock and roll up to a seat or maybe come to your side. And find a nice tall sitting position, whichever one feels comfortable. Feel those sitting bones running down in all the space you created in your body and your mind. Take our hands to heart center, Anjali Mudra, with gratitude for all that we have. And together we breathe in. Exhale out. Namaste. It's a pleasure having you. Thank you for taking class. And I hope you have a wonderful day. As always, ask questions and we'll see you around. Take care.